My name is Vladimir Dutier, and I'm a reporter with Who, What, Why, and Why.com. The last time I visited the Catskills was about 30 years ago when I spent time at a broken down resort with my parents. The memory of bingo nights and polka lessons was still fresh in my mind when I traveled to Monticello, New York to spend a day profiling Wes Gillingham. Wes is an environmental activist and co founder of Catskill Mountain Keepers a grassroots organization working to preserve the region and counts Bobby Kennedy Jr. as one of its board members. Hiking through the forest, listening to Wes as he talked to a group of campers about the wonders of the natural world, I was struck by his zen-like sense of place and his courage in the face of a deteriorating ecosystem. I think when I was a kid, I thought I was going to yeah, be a dairy farmer. I, I liked being around cattle and my uncles and my grandfather all had dairy farms. But it was always sort of between being a dairy farmer and some sort of wilderness kind of person, a trapper. Or, you know, <laughs> I had like crazy ideas as a kid, of, which I didn't want to, you know, take rich dentists into the back country to shoot elk. And all the travels I did around the country, really, one of the things that happened by going to Yellowstone and the Bitterroots in Montana and all these wild and crazy places was how special the Catskills were. That there's amazing aspects to the Catskills that I, you know, it took me traveling around the country to realize. And I realized how amazing the Catskills itself were. And I think that belief has just grown stronger in how amazing the Catskills are and how special a place it is and how important it is ecologically in the East, especially. I mean, it isn't just a, you know, this weekend place for people in the city. It's an amazing jewel of you know intact habitat that's pretty rare there's over 60,000 acres of first growth forest in the Catskills. It's pretty remarkable to me that in an age where most people are shopping at these huge supermarkets looking for beef from Japan which they cook on gas ovens in their fully wired homes Gillingham and his family live off the grid they grow their own vegetables and started their own meat he constructed his house using wood from his land he uses solar panels for electricity, which probably wouldn't provide enough juice to a New York City studio. A stream keeps his beers cold, and wool from his sheeps provide warmth. His kids are homeschooled, and they don't have a TV, but they find ways to stay busy. People Still used to joke that our kids are going to be stockbrokers um, because yeah, of the a, way we live and react. Right, exactly. You know, the same way the guy wears a tie dye because his father was a hardcore Republican. The earth is a much stronger teacher than I ever could be. And if I can nurture the relationship with the planet, and that's that's all I'm doing by providing them the time and the, and the place where they can interact with the natural world. That's gonna be a part of them whether they're a stockbroker or not. And here I am facing you know, the, one of the largest industries in the world, you know, the natural the gas industry. <laughs> they have the most, I mean, this is probably the worst, if, if, if your job is protecting an area, this is probably the worst nightmare you could have. But I don't, in general, I don't go through life with fear. So I don't have a lot of, so that enables me not to like flip out, not sleep, I just plug away at what I think is right and doing the right thing, and I don't have ulcers around it, and because it just is, that's what it is. And I guess going from the, my experiences again from all over the country, I've you know talked that you know talked and and met with people that have done amazing things. Um, without fear and sort of fearless you know a lot of people walking around say oh you know it's so depressing you know as an environmentalist how do you not get depressed but there's an amazing amount of really cool happy stories that are happening around the country and yeah there are small little stories but that's um, that's what's happening